Here are a couple examples of Scotch Bright. The blue pad, now this is what I use in the kitchen for some heavy scrubbing. The circular pads, these are two inch Scotch Bright pads that I use for finishing metal. This is the Scotch Bright pad, the two inch pad, and the mandrel. The mandrel has a quarter inch shank which will fit in a rotary tool such as a drill press, an electric drill, or a die grinder. The mandrel has a mesh so that the Scotch Bright pad adheres directly to the mandrel. What I'm using is rather an old style and they have come up with something that is much more efficient. They've made an improvement so that the Scotch Bright pads lock directly onto the mandrel. Through the years, in using the Scotch Bright pads, I've probably used the drill press more than any other rotary tool, but there have been occasions when I've used the die grinder. An alternative could be an electric drill. My main purpose in using the Scotch Bright pads is so that I can get this swirled effect. This reflects light, especially in these copper and brass sprays. For the drill press, in my case, the first thing that I do is adjust the pulleys so that I can run the drill press at the highest speed. Using the Scotch Bright pad, running the drill press at the top speed, putting some swirls on this thin piece of brass. This piece of brass is just too thin to be hand holding it and putting the swirls in. It's just a very clumsy way to do it. But I left this in the video so that you can see the difference between doing it this way and the way that I'm going to be showing you next by using a board. Using the board, this makes it much easier to do the swirling because there is no flexing of the metal. It's also easier to apply equal pressure throughout the process. If you have an air compressor and a die grinder, now this will work well. A couple of differences between the drill press and using the die grinder is the fact that with the drill press you're using upward pressure against the scotch bright and here you're using downward pressure. Also, one of the drawbacks for me is that in using the die grinder I only have one hand free as opposed to the drill press. In one of my YouTube videos I showed how to make a saddle so that an electric drill such as you see here, can be mounted in a vise. This feels a little clumsy to me, because I've always used the drill press or the die grinder. However, if this was the only tool I had, with a little practice, I could make this work. Now these discs do cost money, so you'll want to get as much mileage as possible out of them. And if you'll notice, the disc closest to us has loaded up with material. I've had success using this wire brush on a die grinder or just a regular wire brush to clean the disc. Using this technique, I've been able to extend the life of the Scotch Bright pads. When I run through my current stock of 2 inch scotch bright pads, I'll be switching over to this locking system that 3M has come up with. Harbor Freight has something similar to the scotch bright setup. I haven't seen these in person, but overall I've been pleased with Harbor Freight products. I don't have a Dremel tool, but if I did, I would be looking at these small Scotch Bright pads. These would be excellent for finishes on jewelry. 
The standard green scotch bright pads can be used for finishing. A power tool makes it easier, but you can get excellent results if you want to provide the muscle.